So I'm back. So hello everyone, I am back. Now, I know I've been gone for a while, but I did get caught up with uni again, as always. You know, I had to build a robot, I had to submit a report, I had to sit some exams, but now it's all done and dusted for another year, and now I'm back to making videos for the channel. So it's been like a good month or so since I last uploaded my most recent video on YouTube. And I just want to say a big thank you to all you guys for showing so much love to that video. And also I want to say hello and <laughs> g'day to everyone who has subscribed since I last uploaded as we have grown quite a lot since then. And I just want to show my appreciation for your guys' support. But anyways, it has been like a month since I last uploaded on YouTube, but it has been even longer since I uploaded anything on Instagram. And so I've recently picked up these two vintage baseball tees from 1992 that I'm yet to share with the world. And so today I thought I could kill two birds with one stone and make a video where I show you guys my process for taking this new style of streetwear photo for Instagram that I have developed that I've just never been seen done before. And hopefully the end result should look something like this. Now, originally, I wanted to take you guys outside with me, you know, go for a bit of a drive, find some really cool, unique photo spots. But unfortunately, like, the entire continent of Australia is on fire at the moment. And so it's really just not very nice outside. There's so much smoke. So I think today we're just going to stay in my apartment and I'll see what I can do limiting myself to just this space. So for this video, I think I'm going to end up taking three photos for the technique I've come up with. Um, but first, let me go get the t-shirt so I can show you guys what we're working with. And so these are what we're going to be working with today. These are two vintage t-shirts from 1992. And you know, I know fuck all about baseball. So don't go in my comment section commenting if they're good teams or bad teams. I couldn't even tell you if these two teams exist anymore. I just think they're super slick shirts. I do think that the Cincinnati Reds one is my favorite. Once again, I have no idea what Cincinnati is apart from it being in America. It could be on the East Coast, it could be on the West Coast. I don't know. But this one's my favorite, and I also got this Florida Marlins one, which is a kind of cooler aqua color. They're both in amazing condition, single stitch, super faded, no cracking on the prints. And yeah, I just can't believe how of nice condition they are in. And so today we're going to be working, taking some photos of these, and maybe some other photos depending on how I want to go with it. So without any further talk, let's go and take some photos. Hey guys, so now it is the evening and I've just gone through and you know, selected all the best photos of the ones that we've taken this afternoon. Uh, now we are moving on to the most important part of today's video and that is going to be editing the pictures together. Now I did initially want to show you guys how I took the photos and that whole process as well. So what I realized is that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless you know why we are taking the photos like that and that is all coming down to how we are editing the photos together. So I thought it'd make a lot more sense for me to explain that during the editing phase and that is where we are now. Now as for equipment, the only piece of equipment that I use to take the photos apart from the camera itself is a $30 tripod. Um, and that is important but I'll get more into as to why that is so important later. Now for editing we're going to use software called Lightroom and Photoshop by Adobe. Now I understand that some of you guys might not have this software or you might not like editing your photos. But I think it is important to look at using creative tools such as these two types of software as if you want to stand out in such a saturated area such as Instagram, um, you really do need to be more creative and these tools really do help you do that. Now that being said, let's jump into our first photo um, and this one's going to be the easiest and we're going to gradually get more and more complex. So to start off with, we're going to import our photos into Lightroom just so we can get the colors the way we want them before we go into Photoshop and then edit the images so that they look the way we want. So to import your photos, you go file and you go import photo and video and then you go down, find your photos, select them and take them into Lightroom. So once you've got your images imported into Lightroom, I'm just going to do a quick edit that I usually do with all my photos. I'm not going to go too in depth regarding my editing process. That's going to be a whole nother video. Um, if you want to see that, feel free to leave a comment below. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to do a quick edit on all my images and then we're going to jump into Photoshop. So here are my images from the first photo. I have three options that we're going to run through. I don't know which one was best or which one will be best, so I'm just going to edit all of them and then I'm going to see which one of the three looks best and run from there. 
Now, before we go any further, I just want to quickly explain kind of where we're heading and what my idea is behind the process I've come up with. So firstly, what we're going to try and do is we're going to make a carousel swipe post, which all looks like a singular image. Now, everyone knows if you post a horizontal picture on Instagram, it becomes really thin and it's not, it doesn't take up much of the feed and it's kind of hard to see and it's not ideal. Ideally, you want to take up that whole vertical space of the Instagram feed so your photo is at its biggest and people can see it the most clearly. Now you can't do this with a horizontal photo, usually you have to use a vertical photo which is an aspect ratio of 5 high by 4 wide. Um, and that is the maximum vertical ratio that we can use on Instagram. So my process here, we're going to take a single landscape photo and then create a carousel of that landscape photo at that maximum vertical height that Instagram allows. So to do that we have to slice up our horizontal photo so that it's in several different chunks or several different vertical photos. Now to do this, it is very important as to what crop our image has, what crop ratio it's at. Um, and we're going to do this now in Lightroom as it has a very good cropping tool. The maximum Instagram vertical size that it'll allow is an aspect ratio of five by four. Like I said, it's five high and four wide. Now, if we want to double that, um, so we have a single photo, which is the width of two and the height of one, it's going to be five by eight. And if we want to make it even wider and have a carousel of three photos um, and have the same maximum height, that Instagram allows, we're gonna do five by 12. And um, I'll show you that further on in the video. For this photo, we're just gonna make it a carousel of two. And so we're gonna keep it as five by eight. And that also equals 10 by 16. And that is already a preset crop ratio in Lightroom. So just make sure you crop it to 16 by 10 and choose the best area where you want it to sit. For me, as you can see here, I wanna be able to split it down the middle there so that when people swipe, they swipe in between each shirt um, and each shirt has their own like post almost, but it looks like the single photo. So I'm gonna line the center line up right down the middle there so that when we do crop it and slice our images, our two images are gonna be separated down the middle. So now that we've edited our photos and we've got them looking the way we want and we've cropped them to 16 by 10, we're now going to export them and save them somewhere where you can find them easy so we can then open them in Photoshop. So you go file, export, and then save them wherever you want to. So now we're gonna open up our saved export into Photoshop. Now the best way to do this I found is to open Photoshop itself and then go file, open, and then select your image as this doesn't leave you guessing as to what aspect ratio to choose if you're making a new file or it doesn't ruin your pixel density um, and ruin the quality of your image. Now we've opened up our images in Photoshop as Photoshop enables us to split the single horizontal image into two vertical images, which is what we want. Um, to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to view then we'll go down to new guide layout. When we select new guide layout, it'll come up with a menu that says, you know, what amount of guides do you want? And we only want two columns as we're splitting our single photo into two vertical images. So just put in two and there should be a line directly down the center of your image and then two on either side of the image. Now from here, it's super easy. We're just gonna go over to the slice tool, select that and then go slice from guide. Now, if this is gone correctly, you'll see a number one and a number two in the top left-hand corner of both slices of the image. Um, and those are the two vertical photos that I talked about before. So that is really all there is to it just for this first image. Um, really quite simple. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna export them, airdrop them to ourselves, and then see how they look on Instagram. Now to export these images, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go file and then go to export and then save for web. Now we're going to save for web as we need to make our image a bit smaller as Instagram has this compression thing where if your photo is too high res, it'll compress your image down and just make it look like shit. So we're just gonna change our image height down to in the bottom right corner here to 1350, as that is the maximum pixel density height that Instagram allows without compression. Now, when it comes to selecting the file type that you save your image as, just select the slice by clicking on either one of them, then go up to the preset. I choose JPEG high, and then I set the quality to 100 as that is the highest level JPEG that it'll export as, um, and then I do it for both slices. Once you have set both file types for export, just hit save and select somewhere where you'll be able to find it again, um, and then airdrop it to yourself and you'll be able to see how it looks on Instagram. Now for some reason, when you, I airdrop them to myself, they switch the photos over. So when you go to upload your photos on Instagram, make sure that you know which photos go from left to right, as that is the way we're gonna post them, as that is how they are connected. So now if we zoom out, we are left with an image that looks like this. 
Now I chose the more zoomed in version just because I think it shows more details of the shirts which are the subjects of the image um, and you'll be able to see like how that print really has kept but you know really it's up to you to use this method as creative as you can and see what you can produce and that is what I have done in the next two photos which are going to get a little more complicated. So now we're going to move on to the second photo. So as you can see with the photos I've taken we got two images of me standing in my living room in two different outfits. Now what we're going to do is we're going to end up blending these two photos together so it's going to look like there's two of me in the same photo in my living room in two different outfits. It's just something that is creative and cool and enables me to show both the shirts in two different ways but it is also something a little bit different that you probably haven't seen before. So firstly when it came to taking these photos what is the most important is that the camera is steady and the background barely changes at all. Um, and that is why I used a tripod as the camera didn't move when I was taking these photos as you don't want your perspective or your background changing really at all um, otherwise that makes it really hard to blend both the images together. Um, apart from that the other thing when it comes to taking these photos is the location or the position of your subject. As you can see in one of the photos I'm standing off to the left and one I'm standing off to the right and this is important as when we do slice this image down the middle we want our subject to be in the center of both of the slices. Um, and to help me do that, what I've done is I've set up a grid on the viewfinder a screen of my camera, which is six by four. And so it has six columns across. And when I'm looking at the viewfinder video screen to know when to take the photo, I just position myself once in the uh, second column from the left. So that'll be the center of the left hand side of the screen. And then I take a photo there and then I take another photo where I'm in this on the fifth column from the left, which is the center of the right hand side of the screen. And so then I'll also be in the center of the right photo. Now it sounds a little bit complicated, I'm, I understand, but it'll make a lot more sense once we get into stepping through the edit in Photoshop. Um, so let's jump into that. So Lightroom is exactly the same as we did in the first photo. Basically you're just going to edit them the way you want and then crop them the same. Make sure that they crop and the edit is exactly the same on both photos. Um, as otherwise it's going to be hard to blend, especially if the lighting is different or they're cropped at different levels. To help you with that, I just recommend you guys just edit one photo and then just copy and paste it over onto another photo um, and then save it from there. You can probably do some more little lighting tweaks if you know what you're doing, but really um, once you blend it, if they're pretty close, nobody's going to tell. So now we've exported them, we're going to open them in Photoshop like we did before. What I recommend when opening both the photos in Photoshop is just opening one and then clicking and dragging the other one on top as that will create it as a second layer on top of the first photo as we don't want to just open both of them as it will open them in two separate files which is what we don't want. So I'm just going to open both of these in the same file. Um, to first. So now if you go into the layers tab in Photoshop you'll be able to see both images as separate layers um, and then the first thing I'm going to get you to do is set the opacity of the top layer to 50%. So now we can see both subjects in the same image there. So now you can see we're starting to blend them together. Now what we're going to do now is going to take our eraser tool and we're just going to erase over the area that covers the bottom layer. So look at which layer is at top and then erase this, that part of that layer that is covering your subject of the bottom layer. Um, so my top layer is going to be my subject to the right, me in the Marlin shirt and so I'm going to erase over the me in the red shirt. So once you finish erasing and you can see the bottom layer clearly, just set your opacity of the top layer back to 100% and so now you can kind of see things coming back together. But you might notice that my lighting was a bit different when I took these two photos and that's because it probably was. Or my editing skills weren't that great. But regardless, that is what we're going to try and blend together and that's what makes this a little bit more complicated than the first photo. So when it comes to blending these two together, it's quite simple. All you're going to do is go to the top layer and make sure it's selected then click add layering mask. So once you have your layer mask added, go over to the, and select the gradient tool and then make sure that you have foreground to transparent selected as the gradient. So once you have that selected, we're just gonna click on the bottom layer and drag over to the top layer. You can hold shift to make it exactly straight. It might take a couple of tries to get the blend looking exactly mint, um, but really it does do quite a good job and you won't ever tell what has been done to the image. So once you go clean up any of those little issues, as you can see it looks super cool with the full finished image. You can barely even tell that these are two separate images at one point. You can kind of be a little bit lenient on things such as like 
the roof or the wall or the carpet where they might not line up by like a little bit of a millimeter. Um, there's nobody's going to be looking at that, especially on Instagram where it's so small compared to your computer. So now that our full image is done, we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did with the first photo regarding cutting up the image and then exporting it to ourselves. And then you can see what it looks like on Instagram. So now we're going to check out how they turned out. And so this is our result. Super cool, super unique. You know, I've never seen anybody else do something like this for their outfit photos and I definitely plan on doing more like it. And yeah, so that is the second photo done and dusted. One more guys, and this is going to be the most complex of, out of all of them, but it's just going to be using the same tools that I've taught you in the first and the second photo. So for the third and final photo, what I've done is we're going to make a carousel of three different images. I think it's a good way to show different products. Like if you've got a new sneaker pickup, it might be a cool way if you want to show you wearing them, you might want to show them in the box and you might just show the sneaker itself. So for the photos this time, what I've done is I've set my camera up just facing a blank wall um, and I've created a grid, which is just a, a three by three grid, I believe. Um, and I just take a photo with a subject in the center of the first column, center of the second column, second of the third column, and as you can see, now I have my three images here. Um, the first image is just going to be me holding the red shirt out, as you can see over here. The second photo, the middle photo of the carousel, is, is going to be the same as the first photo we did, just the two shots on the rack. And then the third photo of our carousel is going to be me wearing the Marlin shirt. The only difference between this when you're using three photos compared to the last few times when you're using two photos is it changes our aspect ratio for the crop as if we remember, we have the maximum image aspect ratio allowed on Instagram is five by four. So if we want to use three of them, it's going to be four times three is 12. And so we're going to have five by 12 as our aspect ratio, which also equals 10 by 24. And you're going to have to set that as a custom aspect ratio as that's not like a common one used in uh, Lightroom. So we're just going to go 10 by 24 you'll see it'll really thin things down. So when you do take the photos, be sure that you have the subject quite zoomed out and not too head and tail in the frame, as otherwise you're not gonna be able to see the subject. Um, so we're just gonna set the crop for each of the images. And then also, I mean, for me, it's a bit more lenient as I just have a white background. So it doesn't really matter if the crops are a little bit different, but if the background does matter and it is a complex background, then you do want to get those crops the same, just like I taught you in the second photo tutorial. So as you can see, we have each of the photos edited and cropped, and now we're going to open them up in Photoshop um, and then do the blending like we did in the second photo. Um, and if you have any questions, make sure you just throw them in the comment section below and I'll be definitely down to answer them as I would love to see you guys using this technique. So it really doesn't matter how you want to layer them. I usually just go the leftmost image at the bottom and then just work my way across. But you know, really up to you, it, it, does, it doesn't matter at all. And now we're just going on the very top layer, which is going to be the photo of me in the Marlin shirt. We're going to go over and just erase over the top of everything else. So then we're going to go to the second layer and just do exactly the same thing, except for you're only erasing over the very bottom layer. So now if we set the second and third layer's opacities back to 100%, you should see each subject from each image. Now, as you can see here, I do have some pretty harsh lines here that I'm going to have to blend, um, which isn't ideal. If they are too bad and too noticeable once you blend them with a gradient tool, you will probably have to jump back into Lightroom and then fix your lighting of the photo and then re-export and try again. Um, but I'm just going to give this a go and see how it turns out. And then uh, otherwise you might have to go back into Lightroom. So as you can see now, we have our single image with the three subjects and we're going to do the same thing as we did in the first two photos, except for this time, we're going to change our grid outline to have three columns instead of two. So like we did before, go to view, go to create grid layout, and then set the columns number to three. And now we should have four lines separating each image. Uh, and so then we're going to go back to the slice tool, slice from guides, and then you now have three images. Everything else is exactly the same. Nothing else changes. Go to export, save for web. We still need to change our image size back down to 1350 and then save it, airdrop it yourself and check out how it looks. 
So now this is our result. I reckon it'd look a little bit more crazy if we had a more complicated background. Um, except for I wanted a plain background to show off the colors of the shirt. And as I said at the start of the video, we couldn't go outside because the air is thoroughly polluted with bushfire smoke. And now that's all there is to it. Now, I understand you guys probably would have seen the use of slicing up an image to post a landscape photo on Instagram before. Now, I'm not saying I come up with that idea, um, but because I hadn't seen it used in fashion very much, I decided to put my own spin on it and blend three different photos together and then slice them up. And that is something that I haven't seen done before. Um, and that's why I was super stoked to be able to share with you guys today as I'd like to see how creative you guys can get with this new method that I've come up with. I just think it's something that's super unique and just I haven't seen done before and it enables you to show like several outfits or several shots of the same product in like a really nice clean format. Um, so I really encourage any of you guys to give it a go. Now my Instagram is at Joshua Denner for anyone who doesn't know. Um, and I'll be posting one of the best photos from today's tutorial on there. So if you do want to see how that's turned out, feel free to head over to my account, throw me a follow, as I will be trying to be more active on my Instagram as my boring ass study period is now over. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new, if you want to see more similar content. Uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much for all of your support again. It really means the world to me and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.